What's up everyone, Alan Morrow here and welcome to this EQ rack for Ableton Live. So what I've done here is I've created a rack which I think is really going to help anyone who is either struggling with EQ or really just wants to sort of have a bit more of an intuitive way of EQing their sounds and really getting the sort of sound that they want. Now what I'll do is I'll jump into the door here so you can see what I'm talking about when I do this. So what I've got here is I've got uh, an EQ rack that I've set up and I've been testing for a good couple of weeks now. And the reason why I did this is a lot of people can struggle with EQ and they can listen to a sound and go to themselves, right, okay, this sounds a bit muddy, but they're not quite sure where to go in terms of the frequency ranges and stuff like that to sort of, uh, you know, alter that sort of sound in that frequency band. Or they might go, mm, a bit too harsh, a bit too much crispiness in this sound. How can I sort of, where do I go to sort of fix this? So I set up this um, rack to sort of really help you um, fix those issues that you have really quickly and really easily. So what I've done here is I'm going to, I've loaded in three different presets, uh, a mid bass, uh, a melody and a pad. And I'm going to show you how the, how quickly it is to uh, change the, change the tone of these sounds with this EQ rack. And before we do that, we'll just quickly go through what we've got. So we've got from uh, the sub. So, you know, when you hear a sound, it's too much, too much sub to it. We've got boom, rumble, mud, warmth and thickness, presence and clarity, uh, harsh. Now, the reason why these two are pink, they're exactly the same sort of, they're in the same sort of frequency band. So depending on your sound that you're using, I tend to use just one of these, whether or not, you know, if it sounds too harsh, I'll just come and bring the harshness up. But if you want to add presence in another sound that isn't sounding harsh, I'll generally use the presence and clarity dial here. And then you've got crisp here to add a little bit of crispiness to your sound. And then you've got the brightness and the air band here. So they're in sort of frequency order but they're set up to really sort of help tune and tone that sound. Now, if you are using, if you want to do deep cuts and stuff like that, it's not really very good for that, but it's really good for just um, balancing the overall tone of your sound. So let's have a little look here on this mid bass for a start. Let's start for this mid bass. Now, let's play it. Okay, so we might be listening to this mid bass and go, mm, you know, there's a little bit too much boom or rumble, for example. We can dial this back a little bit. We might want to then say to ourselves, mm, is it a little bit muddy? And a good way to test these bands to hear it so you have a better understanding of what it's actually doing is to really ramp them up so you can hear the actual frequencies that it's uh, changing. So you can pull out a bit of that mud there and then let's lower those sub frequencies a little bit. And then let's say, for example, we want to add a bit of crispiness to the sort of top end. Add a little bit of crispiness, and then we can leave it like that. I mean, you don't have to use every single band on every sound. You could just be using one. You could be using all eight. It's entirely up to yourself. Uh, we could dial up a bit of the thickness as well. Make the sound a little bit thicker. And maybe let's pull a bit of the harshness out. And I find it works really well when you're doing things um, by little increments, you know, a couple of dB here and there, not too much. And then if you want to test how it's changed your sound. You can quickly go back and test it. And then you can also duplicate this if you wanted to um, and then test another version and then AB it. Always good for that as well. And then once you've done this, you can uh, open it up and have a little look at what frequencies have been changed and how it's sort of changing your sound and learn a lot from that as well. So let's move on to the next sound. We've got a uh, melody here. Okay, so for example, with this one, you might want to get a bit of... Uh, rid of this uh, boom or rumble. You might want to boost it, it depends on the sound, you know? We might want to thicken it up a little bit. Let's add a little bit of crispness to it. And let's add a bit of the air band as well. Let's take a little bit of the harshness away. And just like that, you've changed your sound. Like anything with EQ though, I definitely believe that uh, less is more with that. So have a little play around, sort of see what works for yourself. 
And on this last one, I put this last one in just to sort of show you that, you know, you don't have to use all the sort of bands. I've got a, a trans pad here. And there's a little bit of harshness to it. So all I'm just going to do here is I'm just going to come in. Dial back some of that harshness. So as I say, you don't have to use every single band each time. Uh, you can use as many as you want. So yeah, as I say, guys, I hope um, you've enjoyed this video. And if you are struggling with your EQ or would like a different way of working, then be sure to check this out at, at alanmorrisstudios.com. Thanks a lot for watching.